In this presentation, we're going to add a notes payable account to our chart of accounts as well as the beginning balance related to it within QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're going to be first opening up our balance sheet to take a look at our objective. We're going to go down to the reports on the left hand side. We're going to be opening up our favorite report, that being the balance sheet report. Once open, we're going to be changing the dates up top to the current year we will be working in. That's going to be 010120 to 123120, January through December 2020. We're going to go ahead and run that report. Then I'm going to go up top and duplicate that report by right clicking on the tab up top, duplicating that tab, and then we have a second tab up top. I'm going to close the old hamburger on the left hand side. I'm going to make it a little bit larger by holding down control and scrolling up. So we're at 125. We're now going to be entering a notes payable account. So that represents us owing somebody, typically the bank. Therefore, in down here, it's going to be down in the liabilities section. When we think about the liabilities section, we have the current liabilities. We have the long term liabilities. We're going to consider this note as long term, which means it's going to be due uh, some time over a year's time period. Now note, uh, just be aware that obviously we could have a short term and a long term portion to notes and we, you know, uh, so with financial reporting for generally accepted accounting principles, we might have to then adjust between a short term and long term portion. We will talk more about that when we get to uh, adjusting journal entries. Just at this point in time, realize that if you're looking at your prior at a, at a balance sheet that you're entering for the beginning balances that you're going to be entering into the system here we're going to be entering the note basically as one note now if you have that broken out if you have a short term and long term portion to the note on the balance sheet on your prior balance sheet you may want to kind of combine them you know right now and and think about the system that you're going to be using to be breaking out the short term and long term portion is it something you want to break out in quickbooks or is it something that you want your you know accountant to do at some point whenever you need to create financial statements to give to somebody else because typically if you pay a note off monthly the short term and long term portion will be different with every payment so so there's some different kind of ways you want you can think about you know how to report a short term and long term portion of a note if all you want to do is is track the note balance how much is outstanding then you basically want one account that's going to greatly simplify your <laughs> your process to do that and so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to put it in one account. We're going to put it into the long term, a long term uh, note payable. All right. So we're going to go back to our first tab. We're going to scroll down to the accounting down below. We're going to be looking at the chart of accounts. So we're going to be in the chart of accounts tab scrolling down. Then I'm going to minimize the hamburger over here. If we scroll down, uh, notice we're in order. So assets, more specifically, bank asset, accounts receivable type asset other assets, all of these are other assets, then liabilities, accounts payable, and the credit card type accounts. Now you would expect this one to be below the credit card account and before the equity accounts. So that's where we would expect it to be because we're going to put it as a long term liability type of account. So I'm going to go back up top, we're going to add a new account, I'm going to make it go back down, I'm holding down control to 100 to make sure it doesn't kind of do anything funny when I add a new screen. So I'm going to then go to new. And now I don't want the bank account. I want to hit the drop down and we're going to scroll on down and they have the other current liabilities and long term liabilities. So I'm going to go to the long term liabilities. We're going to put it into a long term liability account. And then we have the added detail that down here, which is notes payable, other long term liabilities and so on. We're going to put it into notes payable. Notes payable arrives here. Notes payable is up top. Now, again, the note payable, you might have multiple different notes. You might have, you know, uh, yeah, an outstanding note on, the, on a car or something that you finance and equipment and a loan from the bank and whatnot. So you could put notes payable and then put the number of the note. Once again, the last four numbers of, of uh, the type of note may be helpful. So if you're at some types of companies have to take out a lot of different notes, if they all come, especially if they come from the same bank or the same institution that you're working with, then you want to have some way to differentiate that. Uh, it's it's important to to realize that the notes, uh, again, we we can track them. How we have to report them on on the financial statements between current and long term can kind of complicate things. It, when you want to track them in the system, if you have multiple notes, then you may want to have the account number, 
and then you can use basically the balance sheet as kind of your uh, chart of accounts to help you to just to, to track the account balances and the different numbers uh, on the end the account numbers could then help you to do that and then possibly work with the accounting firm if you need to represent them in the short term and long term type of portion so this will once again show in under the category of long term liabilities so you'll have that kind of drop down you may want to if you have other long term liabilities add another account called notes payable and make all your actual notes then sub accounts of the notes payable account so this is one area that you know you may want another another account another sub account so that you could then minimize the notes not see the detail make a report of a balance sheet that would just simply combine all the notes together on the balance sheet which is how you might it might want to be seen by something like a bank or, or something like that and then still use the detail for yourself as you do the data input process so then we're going to say that the balance of the note is going to be for the twenty two thousand, and once again the date is going to be twelve thirty one one nine, the last day of the prior period so that the first day of the period we will be working in 2020 will be good so what's this going to do then we know that that beginning balance is going to be increase in the note payable the liability where's the other side going to go the other side's going to you know quickbooks is going to have to put it somewhere pro probably to the opening balance uh, equity account let's check it out we're going to save and close and then let's see where it put it in terms of uh the the chart of accounts down here we're going to scroll down and say here's the credit card here's uh the accounts payable there it is there's the long-term liability uh account for the notes payable appearing just where we suspected that it would appear once created so now we're going to go back to the balance sheet up top to the second tab let's go to the balance sheet and let's refresh it so i'm going to click the url and hit enter to refresh that then I'm going to close up the hamburger. I'm going to hold down control and zoom in uh, to 125. Then we're going to be down here in the liabilities section. So down in the liabilities section, we see down here in the long-term liabilities. And that's going to be our drop-down. So note that drop-down isn't as uh, descriptive as some of our other drop-downs. Like the credit card account specifically says credit card account. And this long-term liability isn't as descriptive. So if we had other things in the long-term liability, in other words, other than notes, then uh, you may want another sub-account so that you can put all the notes into one account. But this is we have this nice little drop-down. And then if you have multiple notes, you can give your detail right on the balance sheet here and use your balance sheet as uh, basically a check figure like your, that you can go back and forth and work with your data input while still minimizing the long-term liability here uh possibly for generating reports for external users who don't need to know uh the detail of the individual notes as well as you know the the last four digits of the account of the individual note so if we then go into that we're gonna say let's take a look at that uh, 22,000. let's change the date up top to 2019 because that's when we entered it in as of let's run to that report and notice what it used down here now it used a journal entry so we we haven't seen journal entry much because Pretty much up till this point in time, uh, QuickBooks has found some form, some data input form to use and has, has not used just a straight journal entry. Although journal entries drive everything, it's driven by the use of forms usually. So the journal entry for QuickBooks is the last resort kind of thing. It's the bare bones. It's, it's like seeing the, the, you know, the bare bones type of the construction feature that, that rather than uh, the other kind of things that would be involved, like the actual uh frame of the house rather than the stucco of the house or something like that so we have actually the journal entry here why because there's no other form they didn't know what else to use we increased the the loan there's no other form to go with it so they just made a journal entry and then they put the other side to um the other side to opening balance uh, they just say split here so let's do some more research on that let's go into the journal entry and see where the other side went in that format so we're going to click on the journal entry here's the journal entry so we increase the notes payable that's a credit so notice we have to use debits and credits here they we it's just now we're in debits and credits so notes payable went up with a credit and the other side went to the opening balance equity account so that's what we would suspect it would have done so that's going to be the equity section so we'll close this back out let's check out that equity section let's scroll back up top and i'm going to go back to the report summary 
So we're back in the balance sheet. So it increased this one. Where did it put the other side? Not to the income statement, but once again to that opening balance equity. Let's check it out. We're going to go into the opening balance equity. I'm going to change the date up top to 2019. So we're going to change the first date, the beginning date, the beginning balance, 2019. There's all our information. There's our journal entry. And there's the 22,000. So, so put it right in there again. And once again, if I go back to our uh, reports, our strategy is, is going to be that we have now put another account here that is correct on if we're imagining that we have the balance sheet beginning balances that we're entering into the, into the system, that's correct. And then the other side is washing out in one way or the other to the equity section as long as we get all the assets and liabilities in there correctly as they would appear on the beginning balance balance sheet, then the equity section must tie out. And once it does, we'll just clean it up. And it, if it results in messy business happening to the profit and loss statement, as long as it happens before the cutoff date, January 1st, 2020, that's okay.